Hello, everyone. It's so nice to uh, have you all join us today for this webinar. Um, my name is Jordan Coda, and today I will be presenting with my peer, Alexandra Cotton. Uh, we were both occupational therapy students at the Australian Catholic University, and now we're recent new grads, are uh, both working in pediatric OT. Um, before we begin today's presentation, we would just like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today and pay our respects to the elders past and present. And we extend our respect to the Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander colleagues and guests who are present with us today. So Alexandra and myself will be presenting our research project, which is titled Mentor and Mentee Perspectives of CP Achieves Mentor Program for Young Adult Consumer Research Partners Living with Cerebral Palsy. Uh, we are thrilled to be able to share our findings with you and how they can be translated to the work at CP Achieve. This research study is a combination of our two interrelated honors projects with Alexandra investigating the perspectives of mentors and myself investigating that of the mentees. We were guided through this project by our supervisors, Dr. Margaret Wallen, Dr. Sarah Harris, and the larger research team consisting of James Chench, Alexandra Burney, and James Plummer. And we will have a Q&A at the end of this presentation. So if you have any questions that jump to mind as we speak, please enter those into the chat and we will do our best to answer them at the end. Now to provide some background into this study, our supervisor, Margaret Wallen, who many of you know, is a chief investigator of CP Achieve. CP Achieve as a research program is committed to involving young adults with a lived experience of cerebral palsy and their families in the research process and translation to real life. Uh, these individuals are called consumer research partners, and they are paid for their involvement in advisory groups and research teams. The CP Achieve Mentor Program was implemented to support these consumer research partners in their role. However, participation in the program is not compulsory. Uh, these consumer research partners are supported by mentors who are largely volunteer postdoctoral researchers or PhD scholars of CP Achieve. So why is the mentor program important? Uh, our research was focused on understanding the CP Achieve mentor program and improving that program in the future. Uh, this program includes a relationship whereby mentor provides support and guidance to their mentees. And in previous research, we have found that mentors provide encouragement, uh, shared problem solving, as well as emotional and social support. And as well, the mentees receive increased self-esteem, learning and professional growth through the process. Now, uh, what did we find? Um, oh, sorry, Axel, your turn. Sorry, John. Um, yeah, so in order to have a look at the mentor program, our research question was, what are the experience and perspectives of CP Achieves, young adult consumer researcher par um, partners, mentors and potential mentors of the process and impact of the mentorship program. So in order to answer this research question, our objectives were to understand the process and the impact of the program, increase understanding of the experience of those who chose not to participate in the program, identify barriers and gaps in the program, impeding the mentees or mentors, to use the knowledge gained to inform ongoing implementation of the program, and as well as to contribute to the larger evidence base regarding mentor programs for young adults with cerebral palsy. So our study used a quality descriptive description approach with semi-structured interviews to explore, analyze, and interpret the participants' experience of the program. We chose to conduct a quality study as it allows for the extraction of meaning from the data, which is integral to understanding the consumer perspective. These methods are really anchored as into what is at the heart of CP Achieve, and that is to empower the voices of CP Achieve's consumer research partners and their mentors. So prior to our data collection, we did uh, create our interview guides in consultation and piloted them with our consumer research partners. And these semi-structured interviews really allowed us to enter a deep reflection with the participants at the time of the interview and also allow for their individual expression um, whilst also ensuring that all of the information that we collected was relevant. 
So we had 14 consenting participants in our study. Of these participants, we had five mentors, three non-mentors consisting of two people who had mentored in the past, but were not currently um, actively mentoring, four consumer research partners using a mentor and two consumer research partners who were not currently using a mentor. For our mentors, the average age of participants was 32.9 years old, and all of the participants had an uh, allied health background. So whether that be physiotherapy, occupational therapy, or speech pathology. For our consumer research partners, the age of participants ranged between 21 and 30 years old. The length of time they were involved with CP Achieve ranged from nine months to three years. And majority of the consumer research partners involved in our study required minimal supports on a day-to-day -day basis and considered themselves to be quite independent. So just to quick give you a very quick overview of the data collection. Um, so it was done in three stages. So in the first stage, we sent out a demographic, uh, demographic survey via Qualtrics just to collect some important information from the participants. Uh, in stage two, we conducted some interviews via Zoom, and these were all transcribed at the time of the interviews using um, a Zoom voice-to-text function. And then in that final stage, we checked all of the transcripts up against the audio and de-identified them, ready for analysis by the um, greater research team. So during our data analysis, we employed the Braun and Clark's reflective thematic analysis. And this was used to analyze interview transcripts and involved a, cy a cyclical process um, of exploring the data, identifying meanings, um, establishing themes, and then reflecting on that process throughout. We checked in with our consumer research partners during this data analysis to ensure that the lived experience was reflected in the final interpretation. So overall, we developed 10 themes or 10 key takeaways related to the experiences of mentors, non-mentors and consumer research partners. These 10 themes will be unpacked further with their potential contribution to the future implementation of CP Achieve as well. First, I will walk you through the takeaways gathered from the young adult consumer research partners. Theme one reflects the feelings from the young adults on the inherent value of the program and the characteristics of their mentors that helped them grow in their role. Uh, confidence was developed due to their mentor support and guidance and problem solving skills grew when mentors summarized their thoughts or offered tips and strategies for communicating ideas. Mentorship allowed mentees to explore the information methodically and at their own pace. Mentors facilitated a judgment-free environment and strong rapport was built early in the relationship with initial meetings spent discussing shared interests, hobbies, and careers or study goals. Um, I've also included quotes for each theme that help exemplify uh, its description. Uh, the second theme concerned the benefits of participating in the mentor program that extended beyond the young adult's role at CP Achieve. Uh, they identified the benefits of having a mentor with qualifications and experience that matched their own career goals. They felt the mentorship program helped them gain useful knowledge and build their resume. And some mentees also took advantage of the networking opportunities that arose from their mentor-mentee partnership, which you can see in that second quote there. Uh, the third theme describes how consistent communication and the use of online meetings strengthened the mentor-mentee relationship. The young adults identified communication and frequent um, check-ins between meetings as facilitating the longevity and effectiveness of the mentor-mentee relationship. The use of Zoom for online meetings was favoured by the mentees as it offered flexibility and improved the frequency of meetings. The fourth theme uh, describes the skills, characteristics and attitudes identified as important for getting the most out of the program. Here they highlighted commitment, passion, patience, self-advocacy and confidence. And the final takeaway from the young adults uh, looks at recommendations for how the program could be enhanced in the future. Mentees felt the program's orientation could be more detailed relating to the nature and structure of the mentor mentee relationship and suggested CP Achieve provide a handout highlighting key information that mentees could go over in their own time. 
Another suggestion for the orientation was for previous or current mentors and mentees to speak about their experience and make suggestions for how dyads could get the most out of the program. Some mentees spoke about the lengthy period of time between the orientation and being matched with a mentor and suggested CP Achieve maintain communication in this period regarding the progress of the matchmaking uh, and email reminders from CP Achieve. To remind dyads to schedule future meetings may also help facilitate that longevity. Finally, they spoke about the meaningfulness of connecting with people with shared lived experience of CP Achieve um, um, and with cerebral palsy. Uh, further online meetings could be utilized to discuss experiences with the mentor program research and to share opportunities within and outside of CP Achieve. I like this quote here that says, you know, if you don't spend a lot of time around people with similar life experience to you, you kind of feel like you're the only one. So it's pretty cool to find out other people that are like you and to say, yeah, I get it as well. Um, so the next few themes discuss what we found out from the mentors and potential mentors. Um, so our first theme here was to be a mentor is to build mutual connection and support participation in research. So mentors largely felt that their role was to develop a mutual relationship with their mentee and gain an understanding of the support needs of that person as a means of supporting their participation in the CP Achieve research meetings. So for most mentoring dyads, this support looked like a monthly check-in to prepare for CP Achieve research meetings. However, very interestingly, it was noted that over time, um, a lot of the dyads tended to ease up in the intensity and frequency of their mentor meetings as the mentee grew more confident in contributing um, and formulating their own ideas. So one mentor's quote, which is quite indicative of this didactic relationship um, is this one here. So I think it was helpful to be fairly open about my own life as a mentor. So then it feels less one-sided. Our second theme was mentors bring skills, experience and expectations to the role. So this theme highlighted through its sub themes that mentors possess numerous skills, experiences and expectations that enabled them to mentor young adult consumer research partners with cerebral palsy. It was quite interesting to find that mentors were proactively invited by CP Achieve, with many commenting that it was due to their skills and experience and disability support. Mentors shared that they initially expected to see um, and see the consumer research partner develop confidence and to also develop skills themselves as a result of being in the program. A lot of mentors spoke about drawing from past experiences, whether that be in mentor roles, mentee roles, their allied health profession, as well as other research roles. Um, and this was viewed positively in terms of allowing them to mentor within this program. So this quote here, experiences throughout my employment career really helped me sort of translate that into that space. So our next theme, mentors experience benefits and challenges of mentoring relationships. So our third theme highlighted that mentors experience and influence, um, highlighted the CP Achieve's influence on mentor experiences. Mentors largely viewed CP Achieve as a positive and valuable learning experience. Um, and it led to personal development as clinicians and researchers, as well as allowing them to attain a greater understanding of disability. CP Achieve resources, such as the agendas provided for research meetings, positively influence mentor experiences. Other CP Achieve aspects, such as the uh, communication, training, or information about how to mentor, were seen to contribute to more challenging experiences. In addition to these program level challenges, individual relationships also experience influence, uh, instances of miscommunication, time constraints, and difficulty staying on track with CP Achieve related topics. Mentors felt a general sense of uncertainty as to how to fill their role, which is poignantly evident in this quote here. So the mentor said, I don't know what anyone else does. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. So mentors expressed that greater supports and training would enable them to know what was the right thing to do. So our next theme um, identified that mentors wanted to make an impact. This theme highlighted participants' perception of the impact of the mentor program on CP Achieve's research outcomes and consumer research partners. So participants shared that they hoped the mentor program was beneficial for consumer research partners with a potential mentor stating that they hoped that they develop confidence in themselves about who they are and what they can offer. Maybe there are other elements of their life that have benefited through the experience too. 
Despite this hope, some mentors themselves felt unsure of the impact of the program, with many feeling out of touch with the process um, overall. A concern as to whether mentors actually needed a mentor also arose with one, some mentors stating that although they had the title of mentor, they had not actually mentored, leading to questions surrounding the impact of the program in terms of. Um, and then our last theme for the mentors was that technology influenced mentor relationships. So mentor uh, technology was viewed as an integral resource, yet both a facilitator and barrier to the mentor relationships. Mentoring dyads use various methods of communication, including Zoom, text, and email, which were chosen according to the needs of the mentee. Largely, the use of technology allowed mentoring dyads from across state borders to meet and remove physical accessibility barriers, such as transport. As a barrier, technology removed the need for physical face-to-face -face contact, which was seen to impact some initial report building in the beginning, um, and also the ability of the mentor to really grasp what the mentee needed. Technological issues also played a role, um, and these presented as video and audio delays. Despite these challenges, technology overall was viewed as a positive um, contribution to the mentor program. So Zim, uh, for a lot of uh, mentoring relationships, they did meet over Zoom, um, and that seemed to work well for a lot of them in terms of sharing the screen, being able to type notes um, as the session was going on. So. That was a really positive outcome. Uh, we were happy to find that the positive outcomes of participating in CP Achieves mentor program did correspond with the existing research that Axel and I looked into. Uh, this includes an improved sense of uh, efficacy, confidence and self-advocacy skills, as well as professional development, including networking opportunities to engage in other research projects favorable mental characteristics, being friendliness, sincerity, cooperation, and supporting the empowerment and professional development of the mentees was also consistent. Uh, the young adults emphasized the importance of the matchmaking process as shared experience, interest, and shared hobbies helped establish that rapport to create a comfortable environment. And these uh, findings, these takeaways, are consistent with the research studies conducted on factors of that successful mentorship program as well as those benefits of being involved with a mentor. Uh, so what did we learn about the experiences of mentors and potential mentors? So we found that mentors need to have relevant experience in mentoring and working with young people with a disability in order to fulfill their role. We also found that mentors feel a need for support and training to assist them to understand their role and assist their mentee. Mentors showed a particular interest in accessing peer support and um, getting to know how the other mentors were doing in their role as well. Our study has reinforced some findings of current studies in regard to the use of technology to facilitate mentoring experiences, as well as the view that mentors themselves may experience benefits through mentoring. These benefits can be of personal and professional nature. So what's next? What can we do to improve people's experience of this program. Mentors and the consumer research partners provided us with constructive feedback and suggestions regarding what can be done to enhance the program. This includes ensuring that mentors have relevant experience in mentoring and working with young people with disability. Mentors have education and support that clarifies the expectations of CPHE and provides guidance for building a mentor-mentee relationship and within CPHE, providing support and training for mentors, which would enable them to fulfill their role and enhance that experience. Uh, mentors and consumer research partners should be able to access peer support to know how other mentor-mentee partnerships are fulfilling their role. And our research reinforces that use of technology to facilitate mentoring relationships. So we'd like to say a big thank you to CPHE, particularly Beb, uh, Deb Markellis for supporting this project. Um, to all of our participants, thank you for willingly sharing your experiences and time with us. And finally, thank you to the greater research team consisting of Associate Professor Margaret Wallen, Dr. Sarah Harris, James Sanchez, Alexandra Burney, and James Plummer for contributing your knowledge and experience to this project. So just in closing points, um, on behalf of Jordan and myself, thank you so much for um, being here and for listening. 
um, please email uh, this email here if you would like to inquire about any further information um, about what we've presented today. Um, CP Achieve also has Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. Um, CP Achieve is funded by the National Health and Medical Research Council. And the website is here if you'd like any further information. So thank you, everyone.